So how did you get into hacking? It's story time today on Hack 5. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. It's your weekly dose of Technolust, and I'm very excited because today it's just quite simply story time. I'm not going to be getting into any PowerShell or Bash or payloads or things of that nature, but rather just talking about a, you know, how this got started in terms of a, a phone call I recently got. Uh, an interesting call from a uh, U.S. senator's office, which was kind of not expected. And honestly, my first time ever speaking directly with someone in Congress, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I guess Congress critters research stuff the same way you and I do, which is to just troll YouTube. And so, hey, that was pretty cool. I got to talk about cybersecurity and Hack 5. And while it's not really my place to get into details, uh, th there was one bit of the conversation that I thought I'd share with you and kind of elaborate as it's relevant to this here community as one of the folks asked, you know, about the Hack5 forums and specifically, you know, the, the where people share payloads and uh, and I'd just like to elaborate with you guys on that because I don't know if I've ever directly addressed it, but I must say when I started Hack5, like as a, just a passion project way back in 2005, the very first thing we ever did, even before publishing the first episode, was to spin up uh, the Hack5 forums and the IRC server. That, Discord didn't exist then, nor did Slack. It's all just reinventing IRC anyway. But uh, but we did that for very good reason. And you know, to be honest with you, th this Nana, this would mean nothing without you guys. It's it's the reason I do this show is because of you guys. It's the reason I make the products. It's the you know the hacker community that has over my entire life. I mean, ever since being a, a fifth grader or grade five onwards, has has really become family to me. And I don't know if you can uh, empathize with this story, but I, I was an awkward kid. I, I was a nerd. I was into computers and Lego way before computers were cool. And I didn't really get along with the popular kids in school. I was sort of an outcast. Um, and through bulletin board systems, I, I stumbled into the hacking scene. You know, a couple of text files on the right BBS. You know, my friends was a sysop. And next thing you know, you're, you're an 11-year-old learning to war dial or building a beige box or, or, or a red box. This was, this is my first red box. This is a Radio Shack tone dialer. Uh, this is kind of what it looks like after being abused for a couple decades. A and the concept here is, is simple, right? Uh, but uh, we'll get back to that in just a second. I, I'd rather just take a moment to quote the mentor because I think he said it best. And then it happened. A door opened to a world, rushing through the phone lines like heroin through an addict's veins. An electronic pulse is sent out. A refuge from day-to-day -day incompetencies is sought. A board is found. This is it. This is where I belong. I know everyone here. Even if I've never met them, never talked to them, may never hear from them again, I know you all. And here's the thing. For, you know, some, the novelty of this red box, well, it wears off. You know, for some, you know, it's simulating the tones that a payphone makes when you pop quarters into the thing. Uh, just means getting a free phone call, right? It's just a fun party trick. But to others, like us, it's a gateway in, into an entire world of exploration. So as a phone freak kid, I was left with questions. You know, why does AT&T's automated coin toll system work the way it does? In fact... How does the public switch telephone network work for that matter? You know, uh, how do sound waves from my voice get translated into digital bits and then shipped across the country over fiber optic lines and then somehow the person on the other end can hear me? Uh, you know, so there you are as an 11 or 12 year old learning the ins and outs of pulse amplitude modulation, pulse code modulation, time division multiplexing, you know, stuff they were just not teaching primary school kids. Uh, and and it just became a way of life, a way of learning, and it's this community. You know, I, I know that for many of you, 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 you may have picked up a, a packet squirrel or a bash bunny and, and, and done the hello world, you know, only to ask like, okay, cool, what next? You know, and, and SSHing in and poking around Linux, maybe for the first time. In fact, personally, I've probably learned more Linux in, on a, on a Wi-Fi pineapple than I ever did doing sysadmin stuff just running Apache. But regardless, you know, maybe you bricked it, maybe you unbricked it because we've got awesome bootloaders. But in any event, you got the bug, right? And all the while, 
There was a community there, an inclusive and open and understanding community. Welcome to hackers of all walks of life and all skill sets. And, you know, I meet cybersecurity professionals at DEF CON every year who come up to us at the booth and, and, and they now have careers as pen testers or, or red teamers or cybersecurity defenders for our military. And they frequently say, hey, thanks, Darren, for inspiring me to get into information security. And I've always said something to the effect of, well, thank you for being a part of this community, because this is this is like family to me. Um, so there you go. That's a little long winded and I could elaborate much more on the idiosyncrasies of a 12 year old figuring out pulse amplitude modulation, maybe another time. But in any event, you can see how for some of us, it's much more than a trick. It's a way of life and it leads to something so much greater. So I don't care the color of your hat, but we're all kind of headed in the same direction. And it's really beautiful to be making the world a better place and having a community where we feel like, you know what? All hackers here, we all belong. So, um, you know, speaking of other hackers, uh, in just a moment, we're gonna hear from one of my favorite Hack5 community members who recently impromptu dropped by the, our studio. Uh, and without being too awkward, though, we're, we're first going to take a moment to thank our sponsor because we have to do that. Domain.com has all of your website needs from .com and .net to intuitive website builders. Create your online identity with their affordable, reliable tools. Even brand yourself with over 300 extensions from .club to .space. Domain.com loves Hack5, which is why you get 15% off domain names, hosting, and email when you check out with coupon code HACK5. When you think domain names, think domain.com. I don't know if you really want to like What's up, guys? mess with that. Hey. hey, guess who invaded the studio? It's me, it's, I'm Cody. It's Cody from Nullbyte. If you guys haven't checked it out, Nullbyte, it's what's up. Thank you. Dude, I wanted to ask you since we've been on the topic lately, what is your favorite packet sniffing tool? Well, for especially wireless network adapters like this, you can just plug this in and fire up Kismet. And what I like about it is how much you can learn about someone without being anywhere near them. So for example, you can see someone has a Nest camera or some other thing that is actively recording. You can see if someone's using their computer or their Roku or their Netflix account. It's really interesting because all this is unauthenticated and you can just sit back and kind of see which devices are in use and guess what the person's doing. So I think of it like a private investigator. If you wanna just sit in your car and see what someone's doing without actually having to be in the room, you can literally watch their devices, look for active data transfers and figure out what that person you can't even see is up to. So if Kismet's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. for signals intelligence and Wi-Fi stuff, I really recommend checking it out. I love the kind of open source intelligence gathering that you can get just from Wi-Fi alone and the fact that all of this is just like in the air. And also shout out to Dragorn who makes the most sick tool. Freaking love me some Kismet. Um, I'll link to a tutorial there if you want to use the Tetra because that's I, what I believe is running on the giant Wi-Fi cactus thing. Anyway, a bunch of Tetras with Kismet. It's good stuff. It's good anyway, stuff. oh, check out Cody and Nullbyte. Thank you. Uh, and what's your favorite packet sniffing tool? All right, awesome. Thank you, Cody. That's all I have for today. I'm recording this back to back with the other UAC bypass episode from 2510. So I haven't had a chance to get into all the creativity and the Hack5 Gear giveaway contest, although I am still hoping to see an awesome technique of payloadifying that little bit. Uh, so stay tuned next week for that. Although I'm not going to go without, uh, you know, without rewarding the community in some way. And, and this one is for a single character catch. Uh, as you might recall on the script in the previous episode, it prompted me at the end for a property and I, I didn't give it too much debugging look over, but man, did I typo a copy pasta and I ended the script with a question mark. And, and that, that's the funny thing about PowerShell. Like there's so many beautiful aliases similar to Bash. Question mark is an alias for where object. So it's just like asking me, okay, where, where what object? I haven't specified anything. Uh, so it got all interactive on me. And anyway, good good catch, the Oxus one, uh, for noticing the mistaken question mark at the end. And uh, I've reached out to you to hook you up with a Hack5 $100 gift certificate. And as always, if you'd like to get some of your own Hack5 gear, unfortunately, we don't have any red boxes because 
I was going to say because automated coin toll system uh, shut down in the early 2000s, but actually I think it's because payphones aren't a thing and also long distance is free. But anyway, uh, if you'd like to get some awesome Hack5 gear, head over to hack5.org. We've uh, just launched our awesome new Plunderbug land tap. Uh, and, you know, that follows along with the theme of today's episode. Um, I would like to ask you, how'd you get into hacking, right? Leave a comment below. Enter to win. Full contest details. Hack5.org slash contest. Uh, I'm going to mention David Lightman and just leave it at that. But if you know David Lightman, you know kind of where I got my bug. Anyway, with that, I'm Darren Kitchen. Trust your techno lust. <laughs> <laughs>